Hello chess crowd and welcome to another video from our series The Top Chess Players in the World and today we'll be talking about Saloflor. Saloflor was a Czechoslovakian and later Soviet Grandmaster, one of the 27 first Grandmasters in the world. Uh, when FIDE was created, uh, they granted um, for uh, many players the title of Grandmaster for 27 players and Saloflor was one of them. Uh, during the 1930s, Floor was considered a potential world championship contender. Uh, he drew matches with the future world champions, uh, the grandmasters Max Ewe and also Mikhail Botvinnik in 1932 and 1933 respectively. And he won the Hastings tournament, which was the, one of the most strong tournaments by that time, uh, three years in a row, in 1932, 1933, and 1934. Yes, and for these reasons, he was considered the second best player in the world at this time, only behind world champion uh, Alexander Alechin. Well, unfortunately, the German invasion of the Czechoslovakia and World War II soon interrupted Flora's career, uh, including any chance at a championship match with Alekin because uh, he was relocated to Soviet Union. Uh, Flora continued to play after the World War, World War II, but he focused on other areas of chess like uh, journalism and even uh, he got the title of international arbiter. And he passed away in 1983. Here we, we have a nice picture of uh, Floor uh, in the left and in the right of the picture is uh, Mikhail Botvinnik in 1963. Okay, let's see the, this game which is considered one of the best games in his career. Salomon Floor with the white pieces against Mikhail Botvinnik. Yes, Mikhail Botvinnik from the Russian school, the Soviet school uh, that taught uh, the, the former world champions Gary Kasparov uh, Kramnik and also Anatoly Karpov. Okay, so quite a player, quite a player. Let's take a look at this game. Solomon Floor with the white pieces starts with d4. We have knight f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. The Ninzo Indian defense. Uh, queen c2 here. Now c5 immediately attacking the center. D takes c5 and knight a6. Here Mikhail Botvinnik wants to uh, recapture the pawn, uh, probably with the knight. Uh, a3 was played, bishop takes c3 check, queen takes c3, uh, c3, and then knight takes c5, recapturing the pawn, and f3 here by Salomon Flor, which is considered a nice move nowadays when you play against the Nimzo Ninja, so very interesting to see, uh, in 1933, Salomon Flor playing this against Mikhail Botvinnik, um, d6 was played, e4, e5, and now bishop to e3, covering the weaknesses on the dark squares, after the pawns moved to uh, f3, to the white squares, f3, e4. Uh, queen c7 was played, knight e2, uh, bishop to e6, putting pressure on c4, queen c2, kind of controlling the jumps of the knight, uh, castling, and now knight to c3. We got uh, rook from f to c8, bishop e2, a6, and here rook to c1. We can see that Salomon Floor is not in a rush to castle because the center is not open, we don't have any open um, file here. Knight from c to d7, we got queen d2 now, very interesting idea because now the c pawn for is under attack three times and Solomon Floor now is um, mounting a counter attack here on d6. Queen to b8 was played, uh, knight to d5, we got bishop to d5, c takes d5, rook takes c1 check, queen takes c1 and now we have this um, minor pieces battle, uh, the bishop pair against the pair of knights, very interesting position. We have queen to d8 here, castling, rook to c8, grabbing the c file, and queen to d2, putting the queen to safety, queen c7, and rook to c1, fighting for the c file. Uh, and here Mikhail Botvinnik is invited to play an end game, and he accepts the invitation, and now they exchange a few more pieces. Queen takes c1, queen takes c1, uh, rook takes c1, bishop takes c1, and we have this very beautiful endgame bishop pair against uh, knight's pair. Uh, let's see how this goes. It seems that the game begins now, because now is the where, where the magic um, happens. King to f8 was played, king f2, now the king has come to the game, uh, king e7, bishop to e3, 
uh, king d8 and here uh, king e1 just maneuvering the king uh, to the queen's side uh, king to c7 king to d2 knight c5 and here b4 attacking the knight knight goes back knight c to d7 so here it's very interesting to see how salomon floor is um, pushing back those knights and not not uh, allowing them to go any further uh, on the board so g3 was played knight b6 and king c2 restricting once again the knight if he jumps over to a4 then king to b3 is hunting the knight so uh, knight b to d7 again and here a4 we got knight b6 attacking the pawn a5 and now knight goes back to d7 bishop to c1 maneuvering the bishop to b2 uh, king to d2 uh, king to d8 bishop to b2 knight e8 and now king d2 was played knight to c7 king e3 uh, king e7 and bishop to f1 it's interesting to see Solomon floor here he's trying to restrict the movements uh, of the knights and at the same time he's preparing some um, pawn ruptures in the position so he's trying to open the position where the bishop pair is going to be more bright knight b5 was played h4 and now knight to c7 goes back Mikhail Botvinnik only waiting to see what Salomon floor is going to do bishop h3 now knight e8 uh, f4 the first pawn rupture now the Salomon floor is trying to do he has managed to put his king into a nice place uh, the, the knights are not beautifully placed here on the first and second ranks and the bishops are ready to play what a position here f6 was played bishop to f5 attacking the pawn forcing a reply forcing a defense g6 bishop goes back to h3 now h6 and we have bishop to c1 i'm in this pawn here already on h6 uh, knight g7 was played and f takes e5 d takes e5 and king to f3 already attacking here the pawn on h6 now once again forcing a response uh h5 was played and then bishop to e3 once again restricting the black's possibilities on this game king to d6 we have bishop h6 attacking the knight knight to eight and now g4 another pawn rupture trying to open up the position every time white manages to exchange a pawn it's opening up the position which is benefiting the bishop pair uh, h takes g4 check bishop takes g4 knight to c7 and bishop to e3 and knight, knight to b5 and it seems this knight's coming to the game but now king e2 uh, now the knight cannot jump to d4 because then king d3 uh, will hunt, hunt the knight again so knight c7 was played king d3 f5 e takes f5 g takes f5 bishop takes f5 and both both Finick now uh, has the possibility to capture the pawn here on d5 so knight takes d5 and now the bishop goes to safety here on d2 protecting the pawn on b4 and after all that salomon floor has a passed pawn <laughs> an isolated passed pawn here uh on the h column uh knight f2 knight 7 to f6 was played king to c4 uh king to c6 bishop g6 now managing to advance the pawn um b5 check now the king goes to safety to d3 knight e7 attacking the bishop and now bishop to e4 check knight e to d5 bishop g5 at now attacking and threatening to capture the, this knight here on f6 because it's no longer protected from the pinned knight here on d5 so knight h5 was played putting the knight into safety bishop f3 attacking the knight once again the knight once again knight to g3 and bishop to d2 uh, protecting here on b4 king to d6 now the knight could jump to b4 but now it is already protected bishop to g4 and knight to f6 got bishop to c8 so we can see that when the bishops they run faster in the chessboard so that's why in some end games when the position is open the bishop pair is more powerful than the bishop the, the pair of knights we can see how easily one bishop can move from one side to another of the chessboard while the knights they don't have this possibility so king to c6 was played and although salomon floor could have captured here on a6 he preferred just to improve the position bishop to e1 attacking the knight uh, e4 checking d4 knight, knight from g to h5 and bishop here on f5 he could have captured here on a6 but uh salomon floor now sees the opportunity to capture the central pawn uh, king to d6 was played bishop d2 and in this position in move 69 <laughs> mikhail botvinnik resigns the game here a 
beautiful victory here for Salomon Flor against the former world champion Mikhail Botvinnik. And here, why did he resign? Uh, well, he resigned because there's nothing else to do here. <laughs> I mean, this pawn is hanging. Uh, you're gonna have an uh, easy end game here. Um, uh, th there's nothing black can do here. Knight g7, you just capture the pawn, and then black will have to sacrifice the knight on the best pawn. The king will help on the defense, and the position is just hopeless. A completely winning end game here for Salomon Floor. Beautiful game, considered one of the best in his career. Let's take a look at the report on chess.com for the stats. Wow, 96.3% precision for Salomon Floor against 95.3% precision for Mikhail Botvinnik. Two very high precisions, but here Salomon Floor managed to win. We can see here in the chart that no time in the game Salomon Floor was worse than Mikhail Botvinnik. He dominated completely the game since the beginning, which is very incredible. And we, we cannot tell for sure which was the moment that Mikhail Botvinnik got worse in this position. We can see that both players uh, made some mistakes, made some inaccuracies. But in general, Salomon Floor was never worse than Mikhail Botvinnik in this game, had never any problem in this game. So yeah, beautiful, a beautiful game from Salomon Floor here against Mikhail Botvinnik. I will finish this game against uh, Stockfish only for you if you want to enjoy here. How can, is it really possible to win this end game? If so, if you're starting on chess and you look at this position and it's not very clear for you that this is winning for white, I'm gonna play now against Stockfish, okay? And then we're gonna checkmate here Stockfish uh, from this position. Let's go. So yeah, here uh, Salomon Flora played Bishop to d2, so now I'm making this move. And here um, Potvinnik resigned the game. So now Stockfish is playing here, a computer with uh, 3200 uh, <laughs> rating. But as I said, this, plus, this position is winning for white. So we could be able to win this. We cannot blunder here. Let's try to do this. Okay. So now we have this end game. Uh, one possibility here is to uh, go after this pawn. Uh, the king will probably try to. Okay. Let's try to calculate some line here. Let's go and check. Capture. Okay. Here we can we are controlling the knight and we capture two pawns and we are winning this endgame. Let's go there. Okay, no problem at all. Let's continue. Oh, he's trying to he's trying to imprison my king here. Okay, let's just uh, calculate a little bit here. That's, that's a good idea here to put the king on b8 and advance the pawn. Let's try to do this. Let's try to do this. I think we can just move the king here. What is going on? If we move here, ah, okay. Then check and I'm losing my pawn here and probably he's drawing the game. So we cannot let this um, the king to come here to b6. It seems that I need to play now bishop to e3 before pushing the pawn to a6. Then we'll be holding this b6 square and ready to push up the pawn. I think that's a good idea. Let's try this. All right, now let's think a little bit more. Um, bishop to c5 is an idea. Protecting the pawn and preparing to push the pawn here. He's going to play knight c7 here, knight c7. What if we push already the pawn to a6 and then we leave the bishop and now e7. And there is no way the knight can stop the promotion. And if he captures the pawn here, may, um, uh, a7 is winning. Okay, let's just push the pawn. It seems a little bit risky, but uh, I mean, a6, he probably will play knight c7. And then a7. And then bishop f4, and we should be winning here. Let's try this. Okay, he played this knight takes b4. What if we advance now? We are promoting, aren't we? Ah, oh, okay, he's got this check. Oh, king to c8, knight c7. Should be winning still, should be winning. Should be winning, king to c8. How do we win this position? How do we win this position if I play now bishop to f4? 
I'm attacking the knight. Uh, knight to a8, now king to b8. And we are winning, and we are winning, okay? Okay, it seems I made a blunder here. <laughs> it's it's stated as a blunder here. It's stated as a blunder here. Really a blunder? And why the bar is still uh, showing that I have advantage? What is the whole point here? Okay, he will capture my pawn. I cannot allow this. Okay, this is really a mistake. But I think I'm still winning here. Okay, we just need to find a way to win here. Because when we attack the knight... Um, then the king is simply going after our pawn and if we move our king then he's just checking us again and there's no point in going to a8 he's going to check again and if we go to c8 then he will put the knight to c5 again and we have a very difficult position here to try to solve and if we could pass the turn does it help kind of risky this move isn't it it's kind of risky, it's kind of risky. But I think that's a point, we just, we just pass the turn, we just pass the turn. And uh, he will have to push the pawn, right? Because if we play here and, and then here, no, he's going here again. So here, here. And then if we play here again, he's passing again, and then go here, he will advance, we capture, he will come here, then check again, now he goes away. And how do we win this? Oh really? Bishop to c5 here is also an idea because we are decoying the king. And what's the idea here? The king cannot play. It seems a good idea. It seems very reasonable. It seems very reasonable. Let's do this. Wow, wow. <laughs> we got a very nice solution here. Is it, is it really working here? Well, I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. We're promoting. And if he advances the pawn, then we capture. And then we play this again. And the king will not be able to play and the knight will have to play and then we are winning it seems a winning idea here very tough very tough very tough this end game it seems to be working it seems to be working all right uh, he played knight knight here to d5 now we can promote with check of course then we're gonna have to play <laughs> king and queen against king pawn and knight are we going to win this i'm not sure are we going to win this i'm not sure isn't there any other way? Can I save my bishop now? I cannot. I cannot. What if I play... No, there's no... What if I play bishop to a3? No, it seems ridiculous to play this. Now, if he plays this... Then I pass the turn. And then he attacks me again and I go bishop a5. It seems to be working. It seems to be working. I, I don't think I can win against Stockfish. By making a queen here and playing against a passed pawn and a knight with my king completely out of the game. But uh, but if I play here, then he can check me here and he's controlling there. I think I will have to play this. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. How do we continue here? Of course, I cannot go here. Then I'm losing the game on the spot. Um, of course, I don't want him to start pushing the pawn. Wow, that's ridiculous. How can we win this? I know this is winning, but maybe Queen A5 stopping the pawn from advancing and, and maybe gaining some tempo. <laughs> yeah, probably this. Let's try anything here. Yes, okay, it was a good move. It was a good move. Okay, not blundering so far. Uh, maybe uh, King to B7 now. King to B7, there's no other check. It's very reasonable, very reasonable. Another idea is to come from here, but... Um, yeah, probably better, right? Probably better because from here my king will go... Ah, okay, okay, okay. Seems reasonable, seems reasonable. Now if I go here, then he can try to check me here. Okay, then he will check me. So if I play this and then this. Or if I play here, he's gonna check me. And then I go here. And he go back. And then I go here. And then it's his turn. Maybe we can try and go to... Yeah, let's see if this works. 
Yeah, I cannot go here. Our blunder piece. We will have to repeat the position. I have to find another move. What do we play now? What do we play now? Check pawn advance. No check here. Maybe king to a7? What's the idea? Yeah, maybe king to a7. Yes, okay. That was a good idea. Now I can play here and it's all over for him. No, he will have this. He will have this. Okay, what's the plan now? What's the plan now? How do we continue here? Not easy, not easy at all. Check. And then we will repeat the position. So not the move king to a6, not the move. We need to control the, the pawn and I, I gotta I gotta give I gotta give this square for my king. My king will have to come from to, to a5. So maybe I'll have to play queen to d2 here and then these ideas. And then these ideas. Let's try this one. Yes, I think that's good. We are, we are getting there. Our king is already into the game. We just need to be careful about those double attacks from the knight. So it seems reasonable to play king a6. And now king to a5. Let's just bring the king on. And now king to a4. You're, we're, we're bringing the king. There is no, no double check. No, is there a checkmate here? No, no checkmate. But uh, this move will, will just... Uh, my king will have to go back, so I should not allow this. Maybe I have to check him from here. Ah, that seems good. That seems a good move. Because if he goes away from the knight, then we are able to bring the king to e4. So it seems a reasonable move. Good. Now we cannot go <laughs> to e4 because of this fork here. That's tough to play this. Maybe queen. Oh, really? Maybe queen here, and then king goes here. No, then, then we got this, this terrible stuff. All right, maybe we we'll have to play here now, or maybe a check here. If I check here, then the knight does not allow my king to come. So it seems I have to check him once again, or maybe play this. What's the idea here? What's the idea here? Back. Uh, ah, okay, so maybe here and then here. And if he checks me, no, I'm screwed up again. Okay, how do we do this? How do we do this? Maybe here with ideas of here if the knight moves. Yes, seems reasonable, but if the pawn advance. Then my king goes after it. It seems to be good. Yes, it seems to be reasonable enough. And and if I play here and he plays here, then then we have that check here, and the pawn is falling. Yes, it seems a good plan. Let's try this. Yes, it was it was the best move. I don't believe it. Okay, we are doing the right thing here so far. Now my king is able to come to the game, or we could even try to cut. The king from the position, I don't know if this, it seems a good plan. Now the king is not protecting the pawn anymore. It really seems a good plan here. Uh, queen to c1, cutting the, the king and preparing to bring the king to b3. Seems a very good idea. King a4 is also good, but then king to c3. Let's try this idea, I like this. Okay, now we are... These pieces are already not coordinated, and now we are ready to go after this pawn here. Uh, after uh, king to e4, there's no way to defend this pawn. There's no way to defend this pawn. So first, first go clear uh, to capture the pawn. Now we'll have to play king and queen against king and knight. Let's go. Okay, that's not going to be easy, but. It's easier than uh, king and uh, king and queen against king and rook. <laughs> okay, um, okay, let's bring the king. All right, let's try to separate the king from the knight. Let's try to separate them. 
Let's just try to separate them while we bring our pieces. Here, maybe. All right, so the, his king is just going to the edge, which is very good. Let's spin him. And okay, we're managing to, to put his king in the back rank. Now here, or maybe here, here's stronger. All right, then I think the king comes. Now the king comes again, and it's starting to be over. All right, so now we're getting there. The king is going to the edge. Uh, maybe we should check him. And then play some waiting move. And then, and then play some waiting move like this one. I think this should be over. Okay, he, he went for the other side. Okay, this is starting to be over. Here, check. And then here. Yes, it's soon to be over. All right, we man we're managing. We're managing to win this. Uh, how can we continue here? How can we continue here? Mm, this knight wants to jump here once again. My queen is attacked. This knight wants to jump here once again. So what if we check? Knight comes back. What if we check? Knight goes back and then here. Then the knight cannot move. And then our king enters. Yes, it seems very reasonable. Yes, it's over. So now the king is escaping from the checkmate. That's why the king stopped fish play there. And we got our second goal, which was to remove the knight from the chessboard. And now it's just try not to stalemate the king. All right, very tough end game. Very tough end game. Very tough end game. Wow. Okay, now this should be easy. That should be easy. Okay. That's great. That's great. Salomon Floor. Salomon Floor beat uh, Mikhail Botvinnik. That's why he's on our playlist, the best chess players in the world. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, this video, please consider giving your thumbs up and also subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for your audience and see you next video.